welcome to Whole CEO with Lisa G. I'm the best-selling author of The Boss Weight Loss. I'm bringing you the top tips to be unstoppable. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually pull up a chair with today's top experts in weight loss, mindset, and business. Learn our top tips to set you up for success so that you can have more energy, be fit and resilient, and feel unstoppable. Welcome, we're here with Paige Jack. Hey Paige. Hi. Hi, I'm gonna tell everybody a little bit about you and we'll jump right into the content. Paige Jack is a brand and marketing strategist who partners with international healthcare professionals to educate them on the benefits of innovative technology for aging better, which focus on genetics and overall age management, which is one of my favorite topics. And your story is so inspiring. When I read that page, I was like really inspired. And I want you to, um, I'll, I'll go, I'll let you tell it. Just tell us a little bit of where you started compared to where you are today. Okay. So I would say a big part of my my revolution or my journey has been started about 10 years ago. And, um, you know, I, the, I was at the top of the world. It felt like, you know, everything seemed to be good. You know, I was at the top of my game in the pharmaceutical industry. I was a cardiopulmonary specialty rep and things were great. And then October, 2009, it was like my whole world got turned upside down. Um, I had, uh, been laid off in pharma with the company that I'd spent 12 years with. And I ended up filing for what ended up being about a half a million dollar divorce. I short sold wow. my house and I did all that with a three and four year old. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, so yeah, they say you're not supposed to do one of those things, you know, let alone two, but three all at the same time. So life changing. It was traumatic. I remember yeah. that year was traumatic financially and, uh, for everyone in our country too. It was, it was, that's when like lots of downsizing started with our industry. I mean, now, you know, we went from about 450,000 reps to about 65,000 in the last seven years. So there's a lot of people that were in my industry, you know, whose whole world's got changed because that's a pretty niche market calling on physicians. And oh, yeah. All industries were affected fitness, you know, yep. real estate, money, all of it. Financial. Yep. It all was pretty bad. So I kind of picked myself up by the bootstraps pretty quickly. And two days after I got laid off, I learned about some pretty unique technology. And I just kind of figured, well, there was, there was a way that I could market this to physicians as well. And then I started kind of finding all the people that I got laid off with and started talking to them to see if they were ready to do, to do their own thing. And um, a lot of people started saying yes. And then I started realizing that there was technology on social media where I could communicate with other people like me. And we attract people that are like us, right? Absolutely. So, so I saw the, the, the downsizing of an industry with college educated people that could communicate to physicians and market to physicians. And I saw the ability to connect with those kinds of people on social media, which is for me, it's been LinkedIn. LinkedIn's phenomenal. I love LinkedIn. Um, I'm obsessed with LinkedIn. I know that's how, how we met, but what I'm interested yeah. in is you were hit with those three changes all at once during the time when our whole economy of our entire world was collapsing, led by the United States. And I'm wondering, do you have any tips or hacks on how you didn't just like go into bed with a bunch of donuts and just give up? Like, do you have any tips of just being resilient? I would say, um, you know, my faith is a big part of that. Um, and just the support that I have of people around me that care about me, you know, made a big difference. And, and just knowing that, you know, my option was not to, I mean, was to survive, you know, especially with two kids, it, there was no other option. And so I just kind of kept putting one foot in front of the other. 
And, you know, things started coming my way that I didn't expect, that I didn't plan for sure. And I just kept doing the right thing. I love it. So having a strong spiritual base is, is one of your steps. And, and just being resilient, is that just something you innately, Absolutely. you innately are a resilient person and having the support around you? Is there any other um, tips or steps that you could recommend to other people to build that, not give up, just drive that you have? Um, I would say more, a lot of it has to do with, with taking care of ourselves, you know? Um, and so support of good friends, those that care about us and love us and, and being a good person, you're going to attract people like that. And they're like you, if you're a good person, you're going to attract good people. If you're a good friend, you're going to attract good friends. So there's a reason that they say we are the five, you know, most common or the most common of the five people we hang out with. Um, and I would say, you know, my support system, I'm really close with my mom, you know, and, and I just, you know, I just knew that I didn't have any other options to just, I had just had to keep putting one foot in front of the other and things kind of came to me, you know, but I was open to it. And in what way is self-care important for that? I'm, I'm curious. Do you have like a routine, like a self-care routine that you could recommend? Well, I like taking hot baths. <laughs> that's, just, that's just my thing, you know? So when I want to just crawl into the bed and pull the blanket up over me and hope, and it, you know, it'll all go away, I like to take a hot bath and, you know, exercise, go for a walk. I live by the beach. I go by the beach. You know, there's something to nature with just getting out and feeling the sunshine on your face. And, and that just, and, and then also gratitude, you know, if you shift immediately into gratitude, you stop feeling bad very, very quickly because we have it really, really good here. We really do. And sometimes we take that for granted, you know? So when you're having a pity party for yourself, I'll say, you know what? Write down five or 10 things you're grateful for. That is an excellent tip. I think it all starts with gratitude. And I think we all do have it pretty good when we look at the rest of the world out there and just, you know, being able to go for a walk and enjoy nature. It's such a, a gift. And I really feel like if, if you don't show up as somebody who takes care of themselves, then that's the kind of leader that you will be for your family and your friends and all the people you influence in business. It all starts with self-care too. I agree with you 100%. Having your faith knowing you have good people around you that are supporting you and having exercise and eating healthy, be part of the example that you're setting for others so that you can be so productive and achieve all the success. And then after all the downturn in your life, you turned it around and now you're in a happy, healthier relationship. Yeah. You know, and also what's a big thing is, is I coach people, you know, that are in the industry that I was in that what, it, you know, do what you love because when you're doing what you love, you never have to work, work another day in your life. And that's true. If doing what you love, you will, you're going to be passionate about it. You believe in it and you can transfer that emotion to others. I love that. It's, it's just all, it all comes back to basically doing what you love and being passionate about it. And then what you when you feel like what you're doing is giving back to the world that's important too isn't it encouraging it's very important encouraging other people because when you, when you help others um success comes especially if you're doing something you're passionate about and some people will tell me you know oh i don't like sales and i'll say well sales is nothing more than a transfer of emotion I can talk you in or out of going to a favorite restaurant of mine or a favorite, you know, movie that I just saw. So it's really uh, marketing or, you know, people talk about marketing sales interchangeably. And I've always had the background in sales. I majored in marketing, but it's really nothing more than transferring your emotion about something you believe in. You know, you really believe in fitness, you know, and, and you're a walking billboard to that. You look great. Thank you. you. Know? And I believe in anti-aging from the inside out you know, whatever it takes to do that, because at the end of the day, 
we're going to live a long time and we, we should be taking care of ourselves so we can live better longer. And our generation is looking for those things. I agree. I agree. It's, it's about everything. It's about fitness. It's about eating healthy. It's about taking yourself, care of yourself from the inside out. All of that stuff plays into aging in reverse, aging better. And I love what you said about sales because everything I think in life is sales. Everything in life is enrollment. Like it, it, you could, if you, I mean, I know you have children, they want to go to a movie. They want a toy. They want something to eat. They can enroll you into it. Um, it's a matter of who's leading the conversation, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, it's not a realistic plan to not like sales if you want to be successful in life and be a leader. But you do have to follow what you believe in and what you love to do and everything else kind of falls into place when you're doing that. You know, it just oh my really does because you're transferring that emotion to other people and you're passionate about it and you believe in it. So you have this energy about you that how can others not believe in it? I feel like, it, you know, yeah. I love that. I've never heard sales called a transfer of emotion, but it, it just, totally makes sense. And thank you for that tip and all your other important tips. Is there anything else you want to leave our audience with that they can take action today and um, go out there and be unstoppable? Sure. I would say for anyone who's having a pity party for themselves, write down 10 things you're grateful for. And before you know it, it'll take seconds to get out of the pity party and you will be surprised at how many more than 10 you put on that list that's the most obvious and simple thing i can think of when people are in a funk because the economy is not so great sometimes you know and things life gets in the way and and distractions come into the picture and and i would say you know that's probably my best advice is to just be grateful we do have it very good in this country and we should be grateful for that well thank you Paige. that's super awesome and where can people find you um, they can find me at either on LinkedIn under Paige Jack or at lighthousewellness.health. Lighthousewellness.health. Yep, lighthousewellness.health. And I met you on LinkedIn, so I hope they find you yeah. in both locations. And thank you for your wealth of information on how to go from stuck to unstoppable, Paige. Thank you. Oh.